Good morning, big girls. I've done about a bazillion drafts on underdog this summer, and I'm starting to dial in. I'm starting to dial in on the perfect draft strategy. So in today's video, what we're going to do is run through four different drafts that I've done. This video is going to be particularly focused on picking from the 101 to the 104. And if you have one of those four picks, I, I believe I believe I have concocted the perfect cocktail. A lot of cocks being thrown around right now. I believe I put together the perfect draft strategy for fantasy football this year. And we'll go through all four drafts. I'll show you where it differs. I'll show you where there might be alternative strategies based on the player that you pick in round one or two. Police sirens going fucking crazy on a July 5th. Double cheeked up on a Friday, just like me. All right, so the way this video is going to work is I'll just throw the draft boards up on the screen. You'll see where I drafted. You'll see my team and you'll see everything in between. The brain is working today. Very large brain energy going on right now. I'm drafting from the 102, okay? Drafting from the 102, uh, I took CD Lamb there. Now, anyone from the 101 to the 104 typically goes in the same order, or at least the same players tend to get drafted from 101 to 104. C-Mac is the consensus 101. Then you have some combination of CD, Tyree Kill, uh, Jamar Chase. Though I've seen, you know, Jamar, Amon Ra, Justin Jefferson, any of those guys, you know, probably even Bijan and Brees Hall, go to the 104. I'm a huge fan of taking one of the wide receivers here. Anchor your team with either CeeDee Lamb, Tyree Kill, Jamar Chase, Amon Ross St. Brown, one of those guys that you know, you're know you in love with, that you feel is infallible this year. So with uh, my first pick, if I am early in the draft, I am without a doubt going with one of those wide receivers to, again, anchor the team. On underdog, you start three wide receivers, so it does even skew that way. It does skew towards wanting to take more wide receivers in your draft. Now, when you get to the back half of the second round, right, you have your wide receiver one, and this is where things are going to differ depending on your league type. I know we have a lot of people that play on underdog. We have a lot of people that don't play on underdog, and they talk about how the ADP on under underdog or the draft positions for players are very different from their home league, and there's no disagreement here. But what underdog allows you to do is kind of follow trends throughout the summer, and because all of these drafts are at least $3 to join, all the ADPs are serious, and everyone is drafting seriously. Seriously, based on how they think players are going to perform this year, there's no auto picking for the most part, uh, unless my dumb ass is in the draft, then I probably auto picked at least like three of my spots, but I did not in this one. So it's all to say the way that players are being evaluated here are from people that are really into the fantasy football space. But that being said, there's another really good resource uh, on 444.com, which I will link down below, which takes the consensus ADP from underdog and other paid platforms like FFPC and Best Ball 10s, but then combines them with ESPN, Yahoo, CBS, uh, I think NFL maybe. So it gives you like a real industry uh, consensus of ADP at the moment, okay? So as I talk through this, I'll try to keep that in mind and try to consider that as I'm talking through players and strategies as well. When we get to the back half of the second round, I love this spot, particularly because when I look at dudes like Mike Evans, Devonta Smith, DK Metcalf, even you know the, the Cooper Cups or the Michael Pittmans who go in the third round, I don't see a major drop off in terms of a tier from the dudes that you have to pick all the way up at the 2 2, 2 3, 2 4, right? Like if you have a back half pick and you grab Puka or Garrett Wilson in three or four picks when it's your turn again, like you're forced to take a guy at the top of the tier. Like, do you really feel that much more confident that Drake London is going to outperform DK Metcalf or outperform Mike Evans? I don't. They're all in one giant tier to me. So for me, you get the best of both worlds where you get your high end wide receiver one in the beginning of the first round, and then you also also get the bottom of the tier of the guys that are in the same fucking tier. So you get a player of very similar value, but you get him 10 picks later. Okay. So here I would take, you know, it doesn't really matter. Like Mike Evans, if he dropped to me, cool. If Brandon Ayuk dropped to me, cool. This is more strategy than it is like player analysis. And because I draft so heavily on underdog in terms of like pure volume, right? I'm ripping off a million of these $3 drafts. Sometimes I'll take Devonta Smith. Sometimes I'll take DK Metcalf. Sometimes I'll take Debo Samuel. It doesn't really matter your preference of player, but I think the best move here would be to grab your wide receiver two to really anchor that position when you're starting three of them. On the back turn, what I found to be like a sweet spot for your first running back is right here, anywhere from the 3-1 to the 3-4, depending on how you value these players. Again, like I'm getting very, very, very high on Kyron Williams, so I find myself taking a lot of Kyron Williams in the third round. If you prefer A-Chan, you could take A-Chan there. If you prefer Derrick Henry, tends to fall there as well. I think Derrick Henry could lead the NFL in rushing touchdowns this year and be a perfectly good 
RB1. So up to this point, I think you have your wide receiver one, your wide receiver two, and your running back one. Now, again, keeping in mind friends and family leagues, running backs tend to go much higher. So a lot of the time, you're going to have to kind of swap what you did in the second and third round. So if you're drafting on ESPN or Yahoo, you'll likely have to take your running back at the end of the second round, and then that second wide receiver in the third round, which is kind of good because a lot of times you'll see the Brandon Ayukes fall into the third round of like a Yahoo or an ESPN league. So in this particular draft, if it was friends and family, like I would be fine grabbing Kyron at the 211, uh, Derrick Henry at the 211, and then on the turn, go go in and get your your wide receiver too, if it's Ayuk or Mike Evans or Devontae Smith. So it's the same outcome, but of course, like ADPs, I'm acknowledging that are going to differ from underdog to a platform like ESPN or Yahoo. So through three rounds, we're anchored with two wide receivers and a rock solid running back one. When we get into the fourth round and you'll see uh, as I go into the other drafts, I want to say I'm the 102 in this one and then I'm the 104 in all three other drafts. And uh, it's, it's completely randomized. Didn't choose it. I was just I wanted to do this video and I was like, whatever the first four drafts I get put into where I'm picking in the first four, those are the ones I'll screenshot and then do the video on. So it just so happened, be the 104. That's what happens on Underdog. You, you join a league. As soon as 12 spots fill, they randomly throw you into your draft spot. So when I get down to the 4-5 turn, right, I've already given myself a good amount of flexibility. You've already stacked up wide receivers. You have your RB1, so you don't necessarily feel like you have to force anything here. And what I found is, and this will be a theme throughout a few of these drafts, the Lamar Jackson, Mark Andrews stack at the four or five turn is fucking beautiful. Okay. And it's something that I take a ton of. It's something that is super attainable at the turn. You have Lamar Jackson coming off of his second MVP season. Mark Andrews on a down year is now a fifth round pick. Case in point, what I tend to do here is if I feel like I can stack the quarterback with a pass catcher or uh, their, their top tight end. Like if, for instance, Mahomes and Kelsey were both available here, I would, you know, double down on them. But I felt like Lamar and Mark Andrews were both going to be available on the turn there. So I went with Lamar and I went with Mark Andrews. In the fifth round, I've talked about this a lot. The way I'm approaching tight end this year, no matter where I'm drafting in the fifth round, is to make sure that I get one of the guys in that top five tier, right? So it's Kelsey, it's Laporta, it's McBride, it's Andrews, it's Kincaid. I want one of those five guys and the striking part of, of that tier is the fourth, fifth round. A lot of the times, if you are picking early in your drafts, if you are the 101 to the 104, you will be able to get Andrews or Kincaid in the fifth round, which makes me feel, you know, a little tingly inside. So if we missed on, let's say uh, at the turn, let's say instead of Lamar Jackson, I went with my third wide receiver. Uh, you know, I went with Jaden Reed or Terry McLaurin or Keenan Allen or whatever, or I went with the second running back, right? I might not force Mark Andrews. I might go with Dalton Kincaid over him and then try to stack a quarterback later with one of my earlier picks. And the reason I like Jackson and Andrews is, again, because they're very, very attainable at this price where it's like I take Devontae Smith at the 211. And then if I want to stack him with Jalen Hurts, I have to take him at the 3-2. And I don't want to jump up 15 spots. You see him go at the 4-7. Like, I don't want to take him 15 spots higher than ADP just for the sake of stacking. So I can wait on that and grab just as an elite quarterback, in my opinion, and then continue going back down the rabbit hole of, you know, flex positions and stacking the other parts of my team. Now, I think an alternative point of view, again, is if you don't really care about stacking or if you're not that high in Lamar Jackson and he's the only, like, top quarterback left, I think I could have easily taken Christian Kirk there, which again would give a lot of my team or would give my team a lot more flexibility going forward. You could have taken Christian Kirk. You still could have taken Andrews or Kincaid. And then you see, I took Dak Prescott down in the eighth round. Now I'm infatuated with Dak Prescott this year. I, I don't see a world where he finishes outside of the top six fantasy quarterbacks. And I got to stack him with CD Lamb up here. So if you wanted to take, you know, this is again best ball. So you are drafting a lot of players at a lot of different positions. So the volume that, in, you know, normally in a one quarterback league, I'm probably not taking two QBs within the first eight rounds, but I want that position to be very, very locked up and I want that position to feel secure on my team. So I went with Dak, but had I not drafted Lamar and I got Dak there at the 811, I would feel fucking fantastic uh, about this team stacking Dak with CD Lamb. So I think that's a real, real reasonable option as well. Fading quarterback, getting your RB2 or wide receiver two at the turn there still grabbing your tight end in the fifth and then getting your QB one down in the eighth and then when I got to the six and seven turn that's for flex spots again just double tapping flex again don't read too much into the player analysis on, on guys like Deontay Johnson or Jackson Smith and Jigba I just don't have a ton of shares of them in underdog so I like to you know diversify the portfolio a little bit but that's where I'm attacking wide receiver running back running back wide receiver and if I go double wide receivers like I did there once I get past Dak 
you know, the ninth, 10th, 11th, 12th round, again, more flex. I'm obviously weak at running back, but if I'm able to get a Tony Pollard down at the fucking 9 2, Chase Brown, a high upside RB2 uh, down at the 10 11, I'm just stacking running back depth there, hoping that someone can anchor that running back two spot behind Kyron Williams. So realistically, if I take a step back and really just explain this draft strategy in, in a few words, it is high end wide receiver one with your first pick, depending on your league either your RB1 in round two or your wide receiver two in round two, and then vice versa for round three. At the QB four or at the turn of four or five, I like the quarterback tight end stack. If you can't pull that off, going with another wide receiver, then the tight end, love that. Then stack flexes for the six, seven pick, grab your QB in round eight or nine. A lot of the times, uh, I mean, the reason that I say eight, nine there is because when you get a C Lamb, it's easy to grab Dak in the eighth, ninth round. When you get Tyree Kill, it's easy to grab Tua in the ninth, tenth, eleventh round. So those guys who are typically the 102, 103 are also super QB friendly when it comes to stacks, and you're able to get them from you know the eighth to the tenth. I mean, Tua went at the eleventh round here, so uh, people who were taking Tyreek would easily get that stack there. So if you want to wait on the QB in round four, totally understand, and then grab your guy round eight, nine, ten, eleven. So we are moving to uh, draft number two, where I did something extremely similar and kind of works right off of what I was talking about with two and Tyree Kill. So I was at the 104 here, as you can see, I took Tyree Kill, then I stacked him up with Jalen Waddle, who I think is in for a big bounce back year. But again, I wouldn't get too hung up on the actual player there. Maybe you could have taken Mike Evans if you want to diversify the, the teams, etc. So two wide receivers off the rip, grab Derrick Henry at the 3-4, have my running back one. And just like I said last time, instead of grabbing my QB one, because Lamar already went, I ended up just going with my wide receiver three, Amari Cooper, and got Kincaid at the 5-4. So exactly how I explained last draft, I just did it in a different way this time around. We went flex. We went flex to kind of pound that running back position, David Montgomery, Najee Harris. So now I feel really good about just the number of touches my running back room is going to get. We got Tyler Lockett, and then to perfection, as I said in last round, we waited until the ninth round to grab Tua, and now we have Tyreek, we have Jalen Waddle, we have Tua, and we have a relatively flawless starting lineup with four really good wide receivers, three touch-heavy running backs, a uh, top-five tight end, a quarterback that just led the league in passing yards, stacked with his top two weapons, and that is how it's done, my friends. And before we get into draft number three, I just wanted to let y'all know that our draft guide is officially available for pre-order. It is at a discounted price, as you can see right there, 25 bucks until it launches on August 1st. This will be by far and away our best draft guide. Obviously, we brought in uh, a very tech savvy friend of mine named JL and me and JL have been working very hard on putting this together. Uh, this will be the best product that we've ever released, and it's not even close. It will be uh, th the problem we are solving with the draft guide is literally that feeling when you're on the clock and not knowing who exactly to draft, not knowing that you're making the best decision. We are solving that for you, and we're really hyped up to introduce this tiebreaker matrix, which will pretty much be an extension of the rankings. You know, any rankings that we have, you're able to kind of click on a player, compare them to other players within the rankings. And these context-specific tiebreaker charts will pop up. Easy fantasy playoff schedule, good offensive line. Is the running back going to be in on two- and four-minute drills? Are they in a fast-paced offense? Are they going to get off to a hot start? Things like that for each position. We'll obviously have our normal in-depth articles that we always have for you guys. And there will be a bunch more as we continue to expand the product. But that is available right now for pre-order on bdge.co. However, 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 as we are on the topic of underdog fantasy, the least expensive way to get it for just $10 is going to underdogfantasy.com or downloading the app and depositing $10 on their platform using code BDGE. So not only will you get deposit bonuses when you throw it onto underdog and then you can come draft with us, like all those drafts that I'm showing you throughout this video are with people just from our Discord. If you're in our Discord, I dropped the link in there when we draft. You could join, draft against us, sharpen up for the summer. On top of the deposit bonuses, you will get the draft guide absolutely free. So this $35 value plus bonuses on the app itself for the price of $10. Underdog Fantasy app deposit with BDGE. If you are a first time depositor, you will get the draft guide absolutely free. All right, back to our regularly scheduled programming. Okay, so this is draft number three. I am from the 104. Now, 
again, guys, like I'm, I'm, I'm sitting here telling you what I think is the perfect strategy. So you're going to see a lot of the same strategy over and over and over and over again. Sometimes I'm just diversifying the players on here. But tit for tat, we went with our high end wide receiver one, Jamar Chase at the 104. We took Jalen Waddle on the turnaround. Again, could be Evans if he was there. Could be Alave if he was he was there. You know what I mean? Like you could take whoever you want. Took Kyron Williams in the third round. So I got my RB1 and then I did exactly what I did in the first draft where I took Lamar in the fourth and then Mark Andrews in the fifth. I could have taken Patrick Mahomes and then I actually could have tried for the Mahomes Kelsey stack, although Kelsey would not have made it back to me. But I could have went with Mahomes and then grabbed Dalton Kincaid or Mark Andrews in the fifth. I took Joe Burrow there. I don't know if that was a timeout or if it was just uh, I took Jabbar Chase, so I wanted to stack him there. But I would not suggest doing that. Don't take two quarterbacks within the first six rounds. Regardless, though, we continue to stack our flex spots. D Hop, Tyler Lockett. Xavier Worthy, he never falls to the 9-4 in underdog draft. So listen, I know I hate his ass, but I will grab guys if they fall two rounds below ADP. Uh, Jerome Ford, Dalton Schultz, Blake Corum. I probably should have mixed in a couple more running backs there. Like instead of Tyler Lockett, maybe I take Zamir White or Raheem Mostert. The point of this is really by like round six, you should have a very well-rounded starting roster. You should have two starting wide receivers, if not three. You should have your RB1. You should have your tight end one. And maybe you have your wide receiver three, maybe you have your quarterback one, but that gives you a ton of flexibility going into round six, seven, eight, nine to stack those flex spots. And that is the perfect draft strategy. Let's move to our last and final draft again from the 104. I grabbed CD Lamb. I grabbed Chris Olave on the way back. I grabbed my RB1, Devon Achan. I grabbed Lamar and Mark Andrews. I don't know how many times I could fucking yap about this. Grab Mark Andrews at the five. Chris Godwin at the six. I actually remember this draft. I timed out. I believe this was on a live stream. Yeah, because Gut and Tony and Jay Moore are all in there. I timed out, grabbed Evan Ingram. But had I not grabbed Evan Ingram, I probably would have went with, uh, you know, a lad or uh, uh, whoever the fuck was there. But uh, would have been another flex play. And then you just pepper those flex plays. Six, seven, eight, nine. Um, I grabbed Tua down there at the 10-9, thought he was still a good value. Jerome Ford is a, is a guy I'm drafting pretty much everywhere as long as he continues to sit in the 11th round. So maybe some of you guys are asking, you know, like, what do I do if I grabbed C-Mac first? I don't think that's really an issue. If you grab C-Mac at the one, then just shift the two wide receivers down. You don't have your high-end wide receiver one, but you still get to take uh, you know, a Chris Olave with a Mike Evans or a Chris Olave with a DK Metcalf, a Chris Olave with a Michael Pittman, uh, Devonte Smith with a, uh, with a Michael Pittman or DK Metcalf. So you feel a little worse at the wide receiver position, but obviously that comes with the fact that you got C-Mac at your running back one. So don't overthink it, guys. I just think the first three rounds, for the most part, you should come away with two wide receivers, one running back, unless something egregious happens in your draft. And then, you know, round four or five, I like the quarterback tight end stack. I like the another wide receiver with a tight end stack and then nail the flex plays until you get to rounds eight, nine, 10, 11 and grab your QB one that you could stack with whoever you took within the 101 to the 104 because it's usually Tyreek, Jamar Chase, CeeDee Lamb and you can always get Burrow, Dak, Tua from rounds seven, six, seven through 10. Uh, and even if you grab Damon Ross St. Brown, Jared Goff is a great floor quarterback that you can get all the way down in the 12th round here. Okay, so we will wrap up there. Uh, I hope you guys found this helpful. Realistically, I'm, I'm telling you the the way that you that you stay most in touch with what's happening in the fantasy space throughout the summer right now is underdog fantasy, right? We are obviously partnered with them. We're running a promo with them, but like I would use this if we weren't partnered with them. It is the only way that I really like stay in the know of what's happening throughout the summer and stay on top of the trends and stay on top of like ADP and where players are moving and where they're shifting throughout the summer. Okay, so go join Underdog Fantasy dot com deposit with the promo code bdge you'll get a bunch of deposit matches you will get our draft guide absolutely free when it launches on august 1st if you're in a state that doesn't have underdog or you've already signed up in previous years or seasons or whatever unfortunately this is only for first time depositors uh but you can go pre-order this for a discounted price right now on bdge.co all the stuff that i've yapped about will be linked down below uh let me know if you guys want to see the same video for picks 105 through 108 and then 19 through 112 uh i think i'll probably just dive into those even if you tell me to shut the fuck up and you don't want those but you'll never would do that you would never ever do that to me because y'all the big girls and um and i just want to give you smoochies Mwah.